It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host and well, this is something I get to do every Sunday morning, and what a joy it is. I love being with the church family. As I say, this is a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive, and well. And the, the church, that's been our theme from the very, very beginning. And, uh, well, that's been going on for a while, 1,091 shows today. A lot of talking over a lot of years. Few rules, no sports, politics, doctrine, but we always do speak well of one another. And uh, it seems to have worked out real well over all these years. This is the um, Labor Day weekend. And uh, it amazes me. Uh, you have Memorial Day. And they say, well, that signifies the uh, beginning of summer. And then Labor Day, it's kind of like the bookends. It just kind of closes it all up. And, of course, by this time, uh, schools are back in session. Football has started. And it just kind of begins to usher in the fall season of the year. But that time between Memorial Day and Labor Day, that's when it's hot, it's humid. (laughs) And uh, I say this. Uh, September, you never know about September, especially here in uh, Northwest Florida, or in West. I actually, uh, this is what I say, uh, the middle between the north and uh, the west uh, part of uh, Florida. You just never know. It can be brutally hot in September, or you can get some cloud cover, and it'll just kind of make everything nice. But then. October rolls around, and there is just no place better on the planet than to be here in this part of the of the world from October up to about, uh, let's say, May. It's pleasant. It gets a little chilly in the wintertime, uh, December, January, by February. We're already experiencing spring when the rest of the world and especially the rest of America, they're having snow. <laughs> and uh, every now and then, you might hear about, oh, there's a snowstorm up in Buffalo, New York. And you go, really? <laughs> Just kind of, that's sort of the joy of living here in this part of the country, in Tallahassee, Florida. I want to welcome you to the show today. We're going to be talking about Labor Day and a few other things along the way. Play a little gospel music for you, because you know Pastor King, he he loves the gospel music, and I love sharing it with you, and a few surprise things to tell you along the way. So um, let's just kind of kick this thing off about Labor Day. Um, It's kind of an unusual name for a holiday, I think. Uh, You say, Labor Day, what's that all about? Well, actually, it's more of of a celebration of the workforce, of the people who get up, go to work, and they keep the wheels a turning, keeps the economy going, and that's really what the celebration is all about. People who who work hard, they they indeed they go out and they they labor, and they bring home the bacon for their families. They support their families, and like I say, the economy just keeps on rolling because of the American worker. And now, I'm going to be honest with you, never been in a union, never, my entire life, I've never been in a union, never experienced that experience. Um, As a matter of fact, it's been a long time since I punched the time clock. I mean, that's only been a few times in my life. I worked in a grocery store for a while. I worked in a parking lot uh, for a parking lot company or a parking company in Cincinnati for a while. And then I was in the military 
And then, since then, I've pretty much been working for myself, and because I've been a pastor part time, uh, get a little bit of stifling from the church. But I've pretty much been out there running a business, or actually a couple businesses, and and just working and making my way that way. However, I'm I'm experienced. Uh, people who have been in unions. My father-in-law was a big union guy. <laughs> and uh, um, Some of my parishioners, very involved in unions. Uh, I've learned a lot just talking to them and hearing about them and, and their experiences and how, how the, the, my, my uh, elder, Brother C.W. Jackson, worked for the Seaboard Railroad. He talked about that he would, they would uh, take the, the train up a spur somewhere and then they'd stop, and they wouldn't go across the picket line, and the people had to come and unload the, the materials and carry it in because they would not cross the picket line. So I, I'm familiar with all that type of thing. But I'm also aware that um, many of the unions become very, very political. And I've known of people who resented the fact that they had to be in a union, they had to pay dues, and they knew that the dues were going to to uh, help a political party that was so far away from their own personal convictions. It was hard for them to do so. And uh, and I just, just throw this in as just a, just a thought. You know, politics is what it is, and of course that's one of my rules here. We don't, we don't talk politics on the show. But truth be it is, it's hard for me to imagine how people could support a group of people who have become so far away. I mean, you think about a party that says, "Well, I'm, 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 I'm for the worker." And maybe at one time that's what it was all about. But the things that are represented these days, it's hard to imagine somebody who wanted to be a part of that. That's just me. That's just the way I see it. And that's just the way I I perceive it. It's just hard for me to imagine how anybody could, uh, especially if you're a Christian, why you'd want to be a part of that. But Labor Day, Labor Day 2024, Monday, September 2nd. I'll always remember that because my one of my best friends growing up uh, when I was a child, his birthday is today. So uh, that's just a, something to, for me to remember. But Labor Day pays tribute to the contributions and achievements of the American worker and is traditionally observed on the first Monday of September. That's uh, and a lot of the, uh, quote, holidays have been moved now to Mondays. Used to be, it hadn't always been that way. It used to be, if you had a holiday and it was in the middle of the month or, or the middle of the week, you celebrated on the middle of the week and you went back to work the next day. But I guess for convenience sake, they've moved them to Monday. But the thing is, people go on trips. That's a long weekend. People travel, and I don't know whether they really celebrate the 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 holidays. Now, uh, according to what I have written or have read here, and I've downloaded some information about all this, there are places where they have Labor Day parades, and I think that's a good thing. I think there should be. And I don't think we have one in Tallahassee that I'm aware of. I don't think I've ever seen or even heard about where there's one taking place. But evidently, there there are places that uh, have Labor Day parades. And I would suppose that in an area where there's a lot of unions, let's take, for instance, Detroit with the auto industry, uh, you think that would be a good place that they'd have a a Labor Day parade? I don't know whether they do or whether they don't. (laughs) So why do we celebrate Labor Day? It's an annual celebration of workers and their achievements uh, that came about during the uh, labor history's most dismal chapters. In the late 1800s, at the height of the Industrial Revolution in the 
United States. The average American worker worked 12 hour days, seven days a week in order to make a basic living. Now, I would agree that that's bad. That's bad. That is not quality of life. Uh, a person who works those kind of hours, they would have no time for any personal pursuits, no time for family or anything of that nature. So I would agree that that's a bad thing, and it causes you to understand why labor unions were formed. And uh, despite restrictions in some states, children as young as five or six toiled in mills and factories and mines across the country, earned a fraction of their adult counterparts' wages, and I would agree and say that's very, very bad. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'd say that's horrible that children would be working in factories in such a way and just getting paid uh, a pittance. And, I mean, you're talking about quality of life. That is, indeed, absence of any quality of life. People of all ages, particularly the very poor, and recent immigrants often face extremely unsafe working conditions with insufficient access to fresh air, fresh air, sanitary facilities, and breaks. So that gives you a, a picture, an understanding of why that um, labor unions were formed. And, of course, we know that um, these uh, came about with a lot of violence. And uh, you, you hate that. You hate that there has to be violence. But I, I would understand that sometimes you've got to get people's attention. So you say, well, Pastor, <laughs> it's kind of like I've been, been wishy-washy. Are you for it or are you against it? No, I think basically I'm, I'm in favor of, of the union. The thing that I've stated and I stand by it, is the fact that uh, a lot of the unions have, have gone in a direction that, that uh, they support, let's say, a party or a group of people that I would just disagree with. And I wouldn't want my money to be spent that way if I was a part of a union. But as I've already told you, I am not. Now I'm going to play you a song. And you say, well, Pastor King, does this have anything to do with Labor Day? It might. It also, I mean, it has, it has a great meaning. And it's kind of a long song. But what it does talk about is craftsmanship, a craftsmanship. And um, one thing I've, I've, I've seen, and I've seen this because of people that I know. My, my brother was a, my oldest brother was a part of a union. And when you are a person and you work in a factory, especially if you're maintenance, and my brother was, man, you learn how to do so many things. And uh, my, and my father-in-law is that way too. He, he can do, I mean, it's just amazing what all he can do because he knows so many things because in a factory like that, the skill sets require you to know a lot of things. And if you don't know it, when you go there, you'll learn it. And so they become craftsmen. And, and I, I've said this concerning my father-in-law. Health reasons, he really can't do physical labor now. But man, what a storehouse of knowledge he has. I mean, he just knows all kinds of stuff. And I remember one time he was was um, helping me put a motor in this vehicle. Actually, no, let's let's turn that around. He I, he wasn't helping me; he was doing it. I'm watching, <laughs> pretty much. But but uh, we needed a flywheel, and uh, I think the one that I had needed to be a stick shift. And the one that we were able to get someplace was not a stick shift, and it had to have a different ring. And he just goes, and he gets the welding torch, and the and the and he just begins to 
So just heat that thing up, heat that thing up, and he popped that ring off and put it on the other. I had no idea you could do something like that. But he did. Because these people who work in these factories and stuff, they do things like that. They have skills. If you listen to this song, it's about a man who had skills. This is the Booth Brothers. A touch of the master's hand. Of course, we understand that the the song, the uh, theme behind the song is uh, the master's hand, which is the Lord. And uh, but also the fact that uh, this old violin player, he was a craftsman, and uh, he made that old violin just put out this beautiful music because he knew how, because he had the experience and he'd done it over and over and over again. It's just like I'm talking about these people who work in these factories and things like this. They learn their craft because they do it. It's repetitive. Additive. And there's a lot of uh, things like that who are, people just become skilled, people who build houses and things like that. They just learn how to do it because that's just what they do. <laughs> this is the uh, Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. Pastor Jack King, I am your host. Just happy to spend a Sunday morning with you as we prepare ourselves to go to the house of the Lord today. And, of course, uh, many of you, you have your churches you go to, and you love your church, and you go, and you support your church, and I'm just so proud of you for that, and I'm so thankful. But I'm thinking that there may be a few of you out there, and maybe you went to church at one time, but you haven't been going lately, and maybe you're looking for a church home. Well, I'd like to invite you to my church. I am the pastor, Freedom Road Christian Ministry. We're located at 7 20 Capital Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza. And we love visitors. 11.05 is our start time, 10 o'clock for Sunday school, frcm.us. That's the website. You can go there and find out more about Freedom Road Christian Ministry. We'd love to see you. I've got something to tell you that uh, we're kind of excited about at Freedom Road. I imagine a lot of you have seen the um, series of movies that have been put out over the last several years at church, a Baptist church there in Albany, Georgia. And um, I've enjoyed these movies. I've seen uh, seen them over the years. Uh, just recently found out there were two more that I did not know. I think they were the earlier ones. So I just uh, have just watched them recently. And they're, they're, they're good. They really have good spiritual content and, and meaning to them. And we're going to show them at Freedom Road. And it's going to start on the 28th of September. We're going to do one a month for six months. And you'll, you'll be seeing a courageous, uh, flywheel, fireproof, um, let's see here. What's some of the rest of uh, facing the giants? They're they're good. They're they're good. And uh, you may say, well, Pastor King, most Christians have seen them. Well, that's all right. I've seen most of them more than once, and I've enjoyed them every time I've watched them. And uh, but it's a good uh, way of evangelism. If you have somebody who's kind of a uh, maybe on the fence a little bit, maybe questioning, this would be a great opportunity to, to bring them. We're going we're gonna to show them, and we're gonna have to, we'll take a little break during the uh, middle of it and have some snacks and things of that nature. And we're going to start at 5.30 on Saturday afternoon. That way it, you won't be out late. If you've got family, we're going to have child care for the children, and we'd love to have you come. And uh, you can come to one, and then you'll – come to all of them <laughs> and then i understand that there's a new one coming out and my wife informs me that the video on that one won't be available for a while but whatever it does we'll show it too and basically we're just looking to outreach and um 
it's a financial investment involved. In you can, you can't just show these to the public. You have to get the rights to do so, and you have to pay for them. And we're going to do all that. We're going to make it totally legal. And uh, well, what we want is for you to help us to make an evangelistic tool. So write this down. The first one, September twenty eighth. 5.30 p.m., Freedom Road, Christian Ministry, 720, Capital Circle, Northeast. We'll get this on our website, uh, frcm.us. I just want to make you aware of that. Um, also, something else to announce to you. Um, you may may or may not be aware that uh, this is not the only show that I do. I do a, a daily broadcast, which airs Monday through Friday here on 94.1. Then it goes to another station where it goes all over the world. And uh, and then on Saturday, I do the Saturday edition of that show, which is uh, the Gospel on the Radio broadcast, Monday through Friday, the Gospel on the Radio broadcast, Saturday edition at 11 o'clock here on 94.1. And you can find the daily broadcast on the podcast, as well as you can find this show and many, many other talk shows on the podcast. Type in Pastor Jack King Tallahassee, and the podcast will come up, and there's all kinds of content. This is show number 1091. You can look for that one, or you can look for others. Um Interviews with some people that you would recognize, a lot of local pastors and religious leaders here in Tallahassee. Just want to make you aware of that. And then, of course, there's the Saturday Night Gospel Sing. And I've been doing that show about, I think it's around eight years. I could be wrong on that. But um, we're two shows away after uh, 498 will air uh, well, actually, by this time, uh, it aired last night. Okay, then we have one more, 499, which will be the next week, and then the week after that, and I believe that's the 14th of uh, September. That will be our 500th. Yes, the 14th of September. That will be show number 500. 500 of the Saturday Night Gospel Sings. And I'm just going to tell you the truth. It seemed like we just started yesterday. <laughs> and I have had such a good time doing this show. I love Southern Gospel music. It's, it's one of my passions. And I love sharing it with the radio audience. So if you haven't been tuning in, then tune in on Saturday nights at 7 o'clock here on 94.1. But then don't forget the 500 show because we're going to be doing something special for that show. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of merge the two shows together on Sunday morning, and we're going to repeat it on Sunday morning for the talk show because it'll kind of be kind of a singing talk type of a of show. So just something to look forward to, show number 500 of the Saturday Night Gospel Sing. Now, I'm just telling you, I'm excited about that <laughs> because um, – I've had people say to me, I've been thinking about getting into radio. And I said, well, that's wonderful. That's just wonderful. Yeah, you, you, you need to follow that passion if, if God spoke to you about it. But I'm going to tell you something. If God has not put this burden on you, you might want to think it over. Because, see, you get to hear the show's but uh, you're probably not aware of what it takes to put a show together. And uh, there's more people involved in this than just me. But I put a lot of time into this. I put time into preparing the shows. I put time into recording the shows and then sending the shows. And then when I get done with it, it's not done yet. Brother Doug Apple, he gets it. He has work to do. And it's a whole production and so if God's called you to do it, you better know that this is the call of God because it was very, very clear in my life when God called me back to the radio ministry after a 20-year absence, this was the call of God. But 
the thing is, that a lot of times people say, well, I got a church and I uh, want to draw some people, so I'm going to start a radio broadcast. Well, I hope that works out for you. I really do. I really hope that works out for you. But, <laughs> yeah, no, not so much. Not so much. So why am I still doing it? It's because it's the call of God in my life. God very clearly spoke to me, this is what you do, but if you're going to do it, you better be prepared to put in some work. And it will have you, as it is my life, because I'm a pastor, uh, I'm, I'm a businessman, I work during the days, and so I'm usually in this studio in the middle of the night. And you can ask Brother Doug when, by the time he gets the programs at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it's a commitment. But to me, it's a labor of love because I love doing it. And I'm just believing that uh, it impacts the kingdom of God in a very, very positive way. Which reminds me, if you are a uh, person, you're in ministry, and you have a heart to want to share your passion for ministry. What's God doing in your life? What's, what's this ministry all about? Then this is the opportunity. If you'll call me or send me a text, either one, area code 850-567-1703, then we'll set up a time. We'll pre-record the shows or the show, and we'll get it ready to air here on 94.1 at 8 o'clock, and we'll talk about your passion. And uh, it'll be great. It'll be great. And uh, people said to me, well, Pastor King, I've never been on radio before. Truth being, a good majority of the people who come to be on this show has never been on radio before. I've never met them before until they walk in the doors of the church. It's amazing how quickly we'll bond and how quickly you'll get into it because we're talking about your passion. And what I have found is that people love to talk about their passion. <laughs> so. This song is called It Should Have Rained by the Kingsman. That's uh, Kingsman. And this is the uh, Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today and to celebrate Labor Day with me, which is tomorrow. And so we're in the, the Labor Day weekend. And uh, I don't know, I, I think it's a, a great time myself. <laughs> I, I like this uh, uh, three-day thing, even though I talked about it earlier, that it hasn't always been that way. But it does give people uh, an opportunity to, to kind of roam the country a little bit as such. So the idea of a working man's holiday celebrated on the first Monday in September caught on in other industrial centers across the country, and many states pass legislation Recognizing it, Congress would not re uh, legalize the holiday until 12 years later when a watershed movement in American labor history brought workers' rights squarely into the public eye. On May 11th, or 1894, employees of the Pullman Palace Car Company in Chicago went on strike to protest wage cuts and the firing of union representatives. On June 26, the American Railroad Union, led by Eugene V. Dibbs, called for a boycott of all Pullman railway cars crippling railroad, uh, railroad traffic nationwide. To break the Pullman strike, the federal government dispatched, uh, dispatched troops to Chicago, unleashing a wave of riots that resulted in the deaths of more than a dozen workers. So... And uh, I'm never in favor of violence, never am. And I grieve over a loss of life, regardless of the circumstances. 
uh, I grieve over the loss of life. So uh, I answered my own question earlier in the show. I said, well, are you a favor of unions? Yes, I am. But I'm not in favor of a lot of things that the unions represent. And uh, the, where a lot of the money goes, because I believe that uh, here we are uh, facing election, our federal election coming up real soon. Strangest uh, political election seats I've ever seen, and I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like this. I mean, this is this is just crazy wild. <laughs> and you know, you got a former president running again, trying to uh, be Grover Cleveland all over again. If you don't know who Grover Cleveland is, he he was a, the president, lost to Benjamin Harrison, and then he was reelected. And uh, this is what uh, uh, this president is trying to do. He's trying to be a repeat. And then we have on the other side uh, uh, the current president who was running, and now he's not running, and now they've just picked the vice president out of thin air and said, well, we're going to let her run. And then she hides. <laughs> I think she's supposed to be doing an interview uh, this weekend sometime. But uh, has some very, very strange political ideas that are in direct contrast uh, to the church. And remember, this show is all about the church. This is this is our theme, has been for the time that I started this show in uh, 2002. I say this is a, about a, the church. A church triumphant, alive, and well. And if it affects the church, then I talk about it. And some of the things that uh, are coming out of that campaign, this is bad for the church. And uh, so I'm just putting it out there that I am not in favor of any party that would support the things that are on the agenda, things that are coming for you and I if they get their way. Now, does that sound political? So be it. The thing is, is that uh, I stand for the church. I stand for the word of God and the kingdom of God. And the Bible is my guide, and I stand on that. So anyway, who created Labor Day in the wake of the massive unrest and in an attempt to repair ties with American workers? Congress passed an act making Labor Day a legal holiday in the District of Columbia and the territories on June 28th, 1994. Mr. Grover Cleveland himself signed it into law. More than a century later, the true founders of the Labor Day has yet to be identified. Hmm. So there you go. That's how we ended up with this holiday called Labor Day. Louis Nets. It's called Not Afraid. Trust him. is trouble. Not afraid to trust him. Well, I like the concept of that because I'm going to be honest with you. I have to allow myself to focus on that reality that God is is always part of the plan and I can trust him. But I'm human like anybody else and I have my struggles and sometimes I have to rebuke myself kind of like Jesus did with the the disciples when he they woke him up during the storm out there on the on the sea and they said uh, master cares thou not that we perish and then Jesus uh, he just said to them he says uh, where is your faith where is your faith where is your faith and that's what the song was talking about I'm not afraid to trust him that's true. That's true. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host, and uh, always just uh, considered a privilege to be able to spend this time with you on a Sunday morning. And some of you are on your way to church. Some of you, 
you, some of you might have already been up and had church over there. Some churches that meet very, very early in the morning. And um, matter of fact, I remember going to a church in Kingston, Jamaica, started at 6 o'clock in the morning. But they were going to have two more services before that uh, time was over. And then they'd have Sunday school in between. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a great 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 day. That was a long time ago. But anyway, some of you will be having uh, more than one service today, and so Labor Day. Uh, sometimes people are traveling, and you may find yourself in a in a strange city, or maybe not a strange city, but a city that you're not you don't live in. And you say, well, I'd like to go to church. Now, most people this day and age, they, they go to their phones and they, they Google. And they'll Google churches. And um, then they'll make up their mind what church they want to go to. Well, you can go to our website at uh, Freedom Road. It's F-R-C-M. Check out our website. And then come worship with us. That way you don't have to Google anything else. Just come on out. We're at 720 Capitol Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza. That is between Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. If you're, if you're not familiar with the city, just set your uh, GPS, 720 Capitol Circle Northeast, 1105, and come and worship with us. Just to uh, finish up concerning Labor Day, it says a CLU met in September in New York, uh, 19 or 1872 for a labor festival. It is disputed who first proposed the idea, but nevertheless, uh, federal uh, Feder federation of labor AFL, who was inspired by a parade in Toronto in support of a strike against a 50 hour work week. Other research points to uh, Matthew McGuire, a machinist, a member of the Knights of Labor. But somehow or another, the idea was formed, and the first parade of the new project was held in Manhattan on September 5th, 1882. It started out small, but then a band showed up, and workers' groups from various industries began to flow in, and eventually the parade swelled to 10,000 people. After that initial success, various states and municipal governments began to Naming an official day commemorate to commemorate Labor Day, and then uh, this whole thing with the Pullman strike took place. There was a recession, and uh, then a strike, and many many people were hurt. There was much 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 damage to uh, property, and then as a result of that, the uh, Congress met, and they said, well, let's create a day of labor to try to appease uh, somewhat. And Grover Cleveland signed it into law. And so there you go. So that's why you're not working tomorrow if you're, well, some people are. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people won't be working tomorrow because they're going to be celebrating Labor Day. This is a Jessica King, no relation to me. The song is Can't Dream Big Enough. Sometimes I drift away inside my head to where I want to be. Jessica King, she says, I can't dream big enough. And, uh, you may know this if you're a regular listener to the shows that I do. I'm all about the dreams, dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. That's the theme of this show about the church and about dreaming big. And, uh, well, the thing is, is uh, we live in a great country where dreams, dreams are possible. I want to kind of finish up today with uh, something that's uh, – I've been listening, kind of tracking this on the news. You know, <laughs> you've heard me say this. I don't watch TV news. I just don't. I get my news from the radio. 
And uh, things are starting to come out concerning this uh, young man who tried to assassinate the former president. And it would appear to me, because they said he was researching not only the former president, but the current president. And uh, he was just looking for an opportunity. And it seemed to me like that he just wanted to be famous. That's that's best I can conclude, and maybe that's wrong. I'm not sure. But here's my point. I've been saying this for years. These people who devise these things in their mind that they want to harm people, and they plan it. And whenever these things occur, they go to their computers, they find out they've been planning this stuff, they've been stocking up an arsenal. It's just absolutely mind-boggling. But this is what I've been saying for years, and I want to remind you of it, is that we need to pray that God would intervene and that the Holy Spirit would reveal these things. If there's somebody who's planning something like this, that it would be disrupted because the Holy Spirit revealed this. And it came to the attention of the authorities and it was stopped. And this happens. This happens. I, I hear about it on the news. I say, well, somebody was planning such such a thing. The authorities found out about it. They, they raided them. They, they, they got the weapons. They put the person in jail. Tragedy avoided. I believe that as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, people who believe in a power of prayer, I want you to pray that prayer with me. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there's somebody out there and they are planning to do something in a school somewhere or, or some public place, Father God, that the Holy Spirit would reveal that, that the Holy Spirit would bring that to light, and that the authorities would find out about it, and it would be stopped. Father, I believe. I believe in the power of prayer, and I believe that you have the ability to intervene. And I'm asking it in Jesus' name, Lord God, that this would happen. And I'm asking you to join me in that prayer. Pray that prayer with me, that God would reveal these things so that these tragedies would not take place. Thank you so much for your attentiveness today, for tuning in and joining me today for the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. And I just pray that you'll be with me next uh, Sunday morning. We'll have a live guest in the studio. That show is already done. And uh, you will enjoy this gentleman. He is, we have, we laugh so much and had such a great time. You're going to enjoy that show. So join me next Sunday morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to bring gospel through talk across these radio airwaves. I pray over this audience, Father God. Lord God, I pray that there be one outside of faith, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to you. I pray over our churches today for our pastors, Father, for those who labor in the services and the music and the Sunday schools, and Lord God, bless them. Father, we pray for peace, peace in this world. We pray for America, peace. And Father, we pray for the city of Jerusalem, for peace in the streets of Jerusalem and in the nation of Israel. Father, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you.